What's up, YouTube? For today's video, we make full best poison type Pokemon team. Now, I'm back for my holiday, and I thought I'd prepare a little theme team for you people. Now, poison type is one of those types that I would say that not everyone likes or is it their favorite. So, I thought I'd uh, give a little shot at this team and uh, see which poison types are actually the best. Now, I do all my streaming on Twitch, people. If you haven't followed me on there, make sure you do. The link is in the description, and let's get into this battle. So, today I've got uh, two battles, and one of them is rather long, but it is very interesting. So, make sure you stick around for the whole thing, and uh, let's go. All right, we have a, a battle on my Discord. This one was against Jake, and I'm going to be starting off with a Skullifeed. Unfortunately, uh, it actually has a Azolf Flea, which is a pretty good counter to my team, seeing as though they're all poison types. Now, the reason I put, uh, actually, I'll say this, um, I'll actually tell the reasons why I put these Pokemon on my team and stuff. And also, the question of today is, what do you think is the best poison type Pokemon, and why? It can be for competitive reasons, it can be because you think they're adorable, anything. Leave below in the comment section. I just like to read through everyone's, uh, you know, stuff. All right, so we got the uh, Thunder Wave coming from the Azelf there. Even after that Thunder Wave, my Scolipede is still going to be very, very speedy. So I was running a special Scolipede. Also, I wanted to put a couple of Toxic Spikes on the field because I had a little bit of a plan in action for the rest of my team. Let's go over this set. So we got Toxic Spikes, Venno Shock Protect, and Hidden Power Fighting. So I can hit some of uh, my still types. Uh, we got the Earthy Speed Boost and Item Life Orb. So we got the Zen Headbutt from Azelf, and obviously that's going to take out my uh, Scolipede with a crit. I'm not really sure if that mattered too much. Uh, you know, it's stab coming from Azelf, and Azelf's attack is pretty good. So now we're going to go into Amoongus here. This is a uh, very uh, bulky but offensive, physical offensive Amoongus. So we're going to have my item knocked off, which is my choice bed. Uh, go for the foul play on Azelf, which is a really nice counter to a physical set, and it's going to take it out. And I definitely don't think that uh, crit mattered there. So uh, Azelf's down, which is a really good counter to my team. And uh, the next Pokemon we're going to come out is the Klefki. Now, it's actually quite a good thing that, um, not Klefki, uh, Azelf actually knocked my item off because I've actually got a move to hit still types with Physical Mungus. Now, Physical Mungus' uh, move, move pool is like really, really barren, but it actually does have Stomping Tantrum, which is quite funny. And Stomping Tantrum without the choice band. You know, that does a lot of damage. If I had my choice band, I would have actually one shot at. So uh, we got max health and max attack, seed bomb, stomping tantrum, foul play, and giga impact. It really doesn't have a lot of other moves apart from that. It's got the ability regenerator and choice band. It actually works fairly well for surprise factor, right? All right, so now we got the uh, Azov down. We got the Klefki down, and we got the Chandelure coming up. Now, a lot of my Pokemon on this team, right... Uh, yeah, they're kind of weak to, some of them are weak to fire type Pokemon as well. So we got, uh, I can't even swap into, like, this is a very hard Pokemon to swap in. It's got very, very big special attack, and uh, it's got Shadow Ball, like, Fire Blast. Like, they're very, very nice, um, you know, sort of, like, coverage moves there for my team. Um, the reason I put Scolipede on my team, uh, it's a very, very uh, nice ability to get Speed Boost. A very nice, uh, you know, it can get Sword Dance and Speed at the same time. And then it can previously like sweep through your team. It can also bat and pass them off as well. So a very nice Pokemon and pretty good typing there. Amongus is a very versatile Pokemon too. Very nice support Pokemon. Excellent ability. Um, has some very good moves. Also very good in doubles too. So I decided to put that on my team for that reason too. All right, so we're going to go into Toxpex here. We're going to be uh, running a physical set here on Toxpex. Now this is actually meant to be a merciless set. Obviously 100% crit ratio. But uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, the Toxic, obviously there wasn't any Toxic there. Uh, there was a safeguard on the field. So that sort of counted that strategy. So I don't really want to lose Toxpex just this uh, early on the game. So we're going to be going into the muck. And uh, the safeguard is now gone. So now the uh, chandelier is going to be going for an over here. This is a muck, a special muck actually. Max health and max special attack. On this set, we've got Acid Spray, uh, Dank Pulse, a Fire Blast, and Giga Drain. We've got the uh, item as Choice Specs as well. And Chandelure is going to get bodied by that. So things are going pretty good at the moment. We've lost two of our Pokemon, but we have down three, and we're down some like good Pokemon threats too. Now, speaking of Pokemon threats, in comes Crookedile. This is a very hard Pokemon to swap in as well because, you know, Earthquake is going to be very good against like a lot of these Pokemon, right? So I'm going to go into Venusaur. Now, the reason I put Toxapex on this team as well, right, uh, because it's such a great support Pokemon. It's very bulky. Uh, it can, it's got nice moves like it can cover, it can poison, it can uh, clear status with haze. Uh, excellent abilities, like, and very, very good typing as well. Um, a very, very good Pokemon. Probably one of the best poison type Pokemon out there. Now, I did obviously not include Ubers and Legendaries in this one, too. All right, so I'm going to get uh, hit by a crit, which actually really hurt my Venusaur, and uh, it actually took it out on the second one. I'll explain, uh, you know, Venusaur probably in the next battle a little bit. It does star a lot in the next battle. 
All right, so old Crooked Owl is going to get a, uh, a Crooked plus one in attack, and I'm starting to sweat here, boys and girls. I'm thinking, how am I going to get around this? So I'm going to go into my Gengar. This was an atrocious Gengar set, but it actually really helped me out. So firstly, I'm going to go for the Protect there, and uh, Crooked Owl is going to go for Earthquake, right? So I'm going to get some Poison Damage. Now, if you notice, the uh, Safeguard was gone, so the Toxic Damage was starting to do something. So on this set, I've got Max Health and Max Speed. I don't even have any like special attack AVs, because this was like a pure utility like troll set. So we got uh, Perish Song, Mean Look, uh, Protect, and Substitute. So what I'm going to be doing, right, this Crookedile won't be able to get through me like straight away. I can go Substitute, then I can go Protect, and then I'll get some Black Slide Recovery, right? And then I can just keep doing it over and over and over again. If Crookedile wants to keep its plus one in attack, right, it's going to go down long before my, like, my Gengar goes down. So their only option, right, is to swap out and lose all their boosts. That was really, really good there. All right, so, so now we've got the Dust Knot coming in. Dust Knot is a very bulky Pokemon. Um, I will actually explain what my Gengar said, didn't I? Uh, I didn't explain why I put Gengar on my team. So Gengar's a speedy special attacker. Um, very nice special attack. Very nice speed. Has some good, uh, you know, very good special moves it gets. Uh, it's Mega's also very nice as well. Uh, got a very overpowered uh, trapping ability. I couldn't, obviously I didn't use the Megas in this battle, but I just thought I'd uh, pop Gengar on this team. Uh, good typing too. It can uh, absorb, uh, t you know, toxic spikes and stuff like that. In the past, in my opinion, it was a lot better when it had Levitate, but that doesn't stop it still being a very good Pokemon too. Um, it's not very, obviously it's a, you know, sort of like a glass cannon Pokemon, but uh, you know, it's, it's still a very good Pokemon and it can swap into fighting type moves and stuff too, if you're good at predicting. Okay, so obviously this Dustnaw can't do much for me. I'm going to be going into Toxapex here. Now, we've got a Pain Split coming from Dustnaw, and it's also Poison as well. So I get to show you, obviously, uh, most times you'll see with uh, Toxapex, right, you'll see it's regenerated ability. I'm going to show you Merciless, because this set was actually pretty strong, like, uh, you know, once the opponents got Poison. So we got the uh, Pain Split Dustnaw. Dustnaw, clearly Dustnaw really can't do much to a Toxapex. Toxapex, even right running a max self, max attack set is still, uh, you know, very, very uh, bulky. And uh, Dustnaw is going to get taken out by 100% crit though. So what happens if the opponent is uh, poisoned, uh, if you got their Merciless ability, it will always critical hit them, which is absolutely awesome. Now, this was probably the best example. So we got Puke Mukin coming out here. I went for a, like a Gunk Shot here. Gunk Shot does connect. You guys probably don't even know that uh, you know it gets Gunk Shot, but uh, it does a heap of damage to Puke Mukin. Like, how often do you see Puke Mukin getting one shot of light? That doesn't happen, especially by, uh, you know, a physical uh, Toxpex. Okay, so now it's going to turn me into a Water Type. However, the Toxic is going to take out the Puke Mukin, so... I didn't take any in and out damage at all. I'm guessing that's what it had. And uh, yeah, I pretty much got off scot-free against that. Now, unfortunately uh, for the opponent, since they turned me into a water type, right, Earthquake is not going to be super effective. So I don't have to fear that Earthquake uh, no longer there. So now Toxpex is going to be able to take that one due to it being uh, obviously only a water type uh, with Soak. Because Soak obviously uh, got get rid of my um, you know, poison typing. And now, people, the other move I had on this was a Liquidation, Gunk Shot, Knock Off, and Peck, people. It actually gets Peck. Now, I did do a Toxapex sweep, and I included a Peck on there. I just had to. And we got Fly Inium Z Peck. Toxapex. Do you get it, gosh? Do you get it? Showing off its Pecks. And uh, it, it actually still fails to take out Crookedile. But Crookedile goes down to the Toxic Damage. And now, my friends, is the first game. I just thought I'd show that battle because Toxpex really got to, uh, you know, its full set got to be showed off a lot there. And I actually came across some uh, Psychic Counters, too. All right, people, let's get into the second battle. This was a pretty cool team, and it was very, very intense, too. Went for quite a long time. I think it was nearly, I think it was about 46 to 50 turns. I can't quite remember. All right, so we have a Galvantulate. Oh, this is a battle against uh, Revy on my Discord, and we got a uh, Bolt Switch. So Bolt Switch does a pretty good amount of damage to my... Scholopy. I'm not sure whether it's going to be... I don't think it's choice specs at the moment, um, like judging on the damage. I wasn't really sure at the moment. It could be, it couldn't be. Um, so we got a Toxic Spike set up there. Unfortunately, a lot of the team actually wasn't affected by Toxic Spikes because they were all flying in there. However, there was a couple, so I thought I may as well just, you know, set them up. So now we got a U-turn from the Flygon. So it's used uh, the Galbanch to use uh, the Volt Switch, and then it used U-turn, right? So like, okay, that's some pretty good momentum on this team, right? And uh, now we got the Amoa coming out. Another uh, Electric-type Pokemon, too and another that flying type too. So I went for the hidden power uh, fighting there and obviously it's not going to do much to a Molka and I got the life orb. Oh, I got the life orb too for obviously obviously a little bit more damage. So getting some uh, speed here. I really can't do a lot against this at all. So I thought, let's just set up the toxic spikes. That's going to be my best bet here and I'll just let a Molga take me out, you know, with whatever moves it's going to use. So now... 
<laughs> if you've noticed, right, the Galvanch use Volt Switch, the Flygons use U Turn, the Amolgas use Volt Switch. Maybe you're starting to get what this team's about, right? So obviously, the Amolgas got to swap out, and uh, now we got the Scyther coming in. So my Spidey senses were starting to tingle a little bit. Uh, like something else. And I'm going to swap into my muck here. So thinking, if this is a team I think it's going to be, it's going to go for a U-turn. And it is. So what they are doing, right, is running a full U-turn slash um, Volt Switch team. Now, I've actually, also I want to say, I've actually done this thing team myself. So if you want to check that one out, you can uh, as well. Or just go, like, type it in. Anyway, so we got the Amol coming back in. I'm going to go for the Choice Specs Fire Blast. Almost taking out the Amolga. I kind of wish Scythe actually swapped into that. That would have been so good. And uh, now we got uh, the Amolga going for a U-turn. So amolga has got got U-Turn and Volt, which is one of those Pokemon that can get both moves, which is, you know, super, super cool. All right, so now we've got Flygon coming back in. I'm thinking they've all got choice items and stuff like that. That would sort of, like, be the best for this team. So go for Fire Blast. I was actually low-key hoping it burnt because, as you notice, Flygon is not getting affected by the Toxic Spikes. And uh, now we got U-Turn for Flygon. Now, Muck just hangs on there. I think they can probably... Maybe they're probably guessing that I am choice specs. And uh, now in comes the Ampharos. So Ampharos is clearly going to have Volt Switch. It's got the Poison, though, which which is really good. So unfortunately for me, the muck is going to miss the Fire Blast. That would have done a decent chunk to Air Frost, I reckon. Even though Air Frost does have some pretty nice special defense. Maybe like a quarter damage or something like that. Maybe a little bit over. And uh, Air Frost is going to take me out the Volt Switch. So both are... Well, two of my Pokemon are down. The thing about U-Turn and Volt Switch teams, right... It, it, if, you, if you can't take, like, one of them out, normally they have, like, a lot of Pokemon left, right? But you sort of, like, got to whittle them down, like, like little bit by little bit, right? Anyway, so I'm going to bring my, uh, my I'm going to call that Amolga then. My Amongus, my Amongus Amolga is going to hit me with the uh, U-turn there. It's only going to do a little bit of damage. Now, these Pokemon I think were fairly bulky, right? So I had uh, the Amongus left. If you remember, I did say I have a Venusaur on this team. And uh, Venusaur did play a very, very big role in this team. So go for the C-Bomb there. Choice Bandit and Frost get probably getting a little bit caught off guard by that, uh, you know, physical presence there from uh, <laughs> the old Amolgus. The Amolgus! Amolgus, guys. I just made up a Pokemon name. Um, you put Amolga right, and you put Amongus together, and you get Amolgus. Man, I, I, I did it again, guys. I did it again. That best be the top comment is I'm going to be very disappointed. Anyway, so uh, I'm, I'm going to call that Amolgus. That's such a good name. So Scythe is going to come in there, obviously, on the C-Bob. And this bit, I had to speed up a fair little bit, right? Because th this thing went, like, went for, like, nearly 50 turns, right? So, obviously, we have the U-turn and Volt Switch from my opponent. But the, the tricky part about this is some of my sets actually couldn't really do much to them, right? So, this Gengar set... This Gengar set was actually really good against this team. I was starting to think, oh, I might be able to stall some of these Pokemon out with Protect and Substitute, right? Even though I can't do any damage, right? And I can't make use of, like, I was completely counted on the... Like, in one way, I was completely encountered on Gengar, but in one way, I wasn't. The one way I was counted, right, because I had Mean Look and Parasong, but they could just use U-Turn and Bolt Switch and completely, like, you know, destroy my strategy. But I could use Protect and Substitute to sort of, like, stall them out. The only things Gengar didn't really work against was, like, Pokemon that were flying, right? Which was, like, half the team, which is kind of annoying. Um, the good thing about that is it could actually swap into those uh, flying Pokemon, like Scyther and Flygon, uh, and, like, U-Turn would do nothing to it because I'm running max health, right? Anyway, so Gavatch is going to come in and get that uh, big 100% crit from the Merciless Tox Effects. And that's going to take me out with the Volt Switch. I was happy to lose Toxapex there. That was fine. So a lot of the... I mean, man, this is, this is the point where I wish I had Stealth Rocks on the field. So if there was something like Stealth Rocks on the field, every time like, the, the opponent would swap out, it would do damage. That would be, like, super funny. I'm, I'm sort of glad that there wasn't uh, Stealth Rocks either because this battle would have been, like, you know, one turn. So uh, we got the Foul Play there doing some pretty good damage to Amolga, which was a Zoroark. Now, I really like Shiny uh, Zoroark. It looks like super cool with that purple. So going back out into Gengar, getting a little bit more regenerated back on the old uh, uh, Amolgarus. And uh, out goes the uh, Zorak, and in comes the Flygon again. Man, how many times, like, I don't know if someone's got the time to do this, right? But how many times did the opponent switch in this battle? Would it have been, okay, the battle went for 46 turns, right? So that's does that mean it, they, they swap 46 times in the battle? I'm pretty sure it does. Actually, no, there, there would have been a couple of ones there weren't because I used Protect and... I used, well, I used Protect, right? Substitute sort of, uh, you know, the U-turn and Bolt Switch would have gone off. Anyway, uh, so I, just, I was just thinking about myself. So in comes the big uh, Venusaur here. I didn't actually explain what my, my Venusaur set. Let me explain what that uh, what this beauty was. I didn't get to show it off, like, so much in this battle. It's more like Venusaur is just, like, bulk and... Uh, you know, sustain that really helped it out. That's why I also put Venusaur on this team, especially Mega Venusaur. I know it's got, and also guys, you got you got to remember it does have Fury Cutter too. So that's always the reason to put it on this team. So this was a Skull 
Bash set, uh, max health, max special defense. So the Skull Bash giving it an extra bulk in defense and uh, making it have some sort of like offensive presence on the physical side. We got Leech Seed for sustain, Giga Drain for sustain. Also, if I got taunted and I got my favorite healing move to top it all off. And we got the ability as Overgrow and the item as Black Sludge. So lots of recovery going on there with the Venus Sorp. Now, even since it was running max health and max special defense, it was still reasonably bulky on the physical side. So healing off there, basically the Pokemon that was the problem at the moment on their team was the Scyther with Choice Band Technician. Because this thing was dropping it hard. Like, look at the damage it was doing. So I'm going to get to my Leech Seed damage on the Scyther, which is good. I think they tried to disguise the uh, Scyther as a Zorak a couple of times in this battle too. Anyway, so we got our U-turn there on the uh, on the uh, Venusaur. Look how much damage that did. The only thing I was worried about here, because like if I lost my Venusaur, this was sort of like the anchor of my team. Because Among Amongus didn't have any forms of recovery outside of Regenerator, right? And then I had to start swapping into Gengar. Gengar was pretty good swapping into U-turns, but it couldn't really handle swapping into a lot of vault switches, right? So I just have to heal so much here and wait my sort of like time to try and, uh, you know, take these Pokemon down a little bit. So we got another U-turn there. Look how much damage that's doing. That's doing so much. That's a clear two hit code. So we got Zoroark coming in. I went for an offensive Giga Drain instead of go for a heal. I thought I'd shake things up a little bit. And uh, Zoroark is going to go down there. I get some nice recovery and I get some Black Slash too. So now we've got the uh, Scyther coming back in now. I thought, no, this is too risky. I've got to go into Gengar. I've got to sponge that U-turn. And it, man, it's sponged it beautifully there and I get a curse like curse body there now I was thinking if I could get maybe one of their Pokemon left I might be able to go for a Perish Song and you know and, and just finish them off the problem it would be like if I can get maybe get this Scyther like trapped down to the last one something like that anyway so Mogul's gonna come in and uh Flygon's gonna come in man these Pokemon are coming in everywhere these Pokemon are hitting me from all angles guys and uh now we've got the Scyther coming back again this Scyther was so annoying so go for the foul play here foul play does a lot of damage I don't know whether that one mattered at all. I'm not really sure. It would have done a lot of damage to a Scyther, like a Choice Band Technician Scyther. I was Choice Band. I was, I was, I was Choice Band myself. I'm not sure what item they're running. Maybe the, I think they were running Choice Band themselves, or they could have just been running Everlight. I wasn't too sure. Um. Anyway, we had the Black Surge recovery here. Amogus going to go for a U-turn. Amogus fails to take me out. Uh, the next Pokemon we got is the Fly God. Unfortunately for, uh, unfortunately for them, I actually went for a Giga Drain there. I played really risky at the end here because I thought. You know, they probably expected me to heal off, but I thought to go for Giga Drain, because Giga Drain will obviously have some, uh, do some damage to them, and would heal me up at the same time. So, Ampharos is going to come in there. Obviously, they're just sacking off their Ampharos, so then they can bring a fresh new Pokemon in on my Venusaur, which has only got, like, a little bit of health left there. All right, so we've got Flygon coming in here. Uh, Flygon, obviously, is going to be able to take me out, so I've got to swap back into Gengar again. It's going to go for a U-turn. Uh, Gengar takes that one really nicely, man. Thank goodness, thank goodness for this Gengar set. Like, this Gengar and Venusaur core was absolutely wild. So uh, the Galvanch is going to go down there. He can't do anything to me at all. Uh, Gengar, uh, sorry, Flygon's going to come in against my Gengar. I'm going to swap out my Gengar, go back into Amoongus, and prepare to obviously fire off a laser at the opponent. So we got the uh, Flygon hitting with the U-turn there. Doesn't do a lot of damage. Amolga's going to come in. Amolga is going to have to go for a U-turn or a Volt Switch. It's going to opt to go for the U-turn. Uh, Amolga's going to swap out. Flygon's going to come back in. I went for the C-Bomb. Choice Banner there, and Flygon is down. Now we're starting to finally get somewhere. A couple of Pokemon are starting to go down there now. Amolga's going to come back in here, and I'm going to swap the Amoongus us out, getting a little bit of regenerator recovery, going back into big uh, Venusaur. It's going to hit me with a U-turn. I live on two health, getting some Black Slash recovery. Man, this Venusaur is an absolute unit. And uh, finally, Amolga is the last Pokemon. So I saved this move for them the whole entire battle. So it's like, okay, firstly, we're going to go for Protect, right? In case old Amolga gets a, uh, a little bit of a crit, which uh, would be rather nasty. So now I'm going to go for the Perish Dog. And uh, obviously, Amolga's got three turns to live this one. Well, it's got three turns to obviously take my Gengar out. Or, or not take my Gengar out. Then I'll start to think, right, um, let's see, right, if I can actually curse body them and take them out with struggle. That would be absolutely wild, right? So we've got the Among Us in the back. We're all good. So go for another protect there. Uh, Among Us, sorry, uh, Amolga Among Us is going to hit me with a uh, U-turn. It's going to get cursed body. And this thing is actually choice. So it's got one more turn. It's last turn. I went for the mean look instead of going for the protect because I want them to take themselves out with struggle because that's the sort of person... I am. And now I'm just going to go for a struggle. And, uh, man. Holy shit. That was a good battle. Thank you guys for watching. That was crazy. Volturn, you switch team. And I hope you guys enjoyed the bloopers. Peace out.